Welcome back to Space Castle Saturdays, everybody. We're a grown ass man in his pajamas. That's me, DT. Recaptures that cozy, nostalgic feeling of playing that game you bought or rented the night before on a Saturday morning, getting up early before everybody else could snag the TV away from you. This week, we're going to play Secret of Mana because I am sick with COVID. <laughs> That's why there's not another mainstream video this week because I have the COVID. Uh, no regrets. I have a throat lozenge in my mouth right now. I apologize. I'm trying to get through this video without coughing up a storm. Uh, yeah, I've got the COVID. Uh, I went to a festival with a bunch of friends from out of town. The inevitable happened where it just became a mini little super spreader event and everybody who was in our group ended up with COVID. Uh, no regrets, like I said, it was so much fun. But we're playing The Secret of Mana from August of 1993. It came out for the Super Nintendo because this is a game that I would always, always play when I was home sick from school and didn't feel well. Uh, this game has a lot of cozy memories for me. Uh, it's just something that I would just like plop down on the couch with a blanket and some Gatorade, grab the controller and just play this for hours on end, knowing that all my friends who were just absolute saps would be at school learning pointless shit like math and spelling. <laughs> So I love this game. It's an absolute masterpiece. Uh, it's actually the sequel to Second Deaths in... Ah, hold on. I've got my notes because I am not feeling well. My head is swimming. <laughs> it is the sequel to Seiken Densetsu. Uh, we only know it as Secret of Mana here in the States, but in Japan it was known as Seiken Densetsu 2. Um, when it was released in August of 1993, it immediately sold out in Japan. People went absolutely crazy for it. Uh, once it's released in America, it sold out very quickly too. It got pretty near perfect ratings across the board. People love the colorful graphics, the uh, detail of the sprites. They loved the music by uh, Hiroki Kikuta, and it's just just a square masterpiece. It's something that kind of surprised a lot of people because they were mostly known for Final Fantasy at the time. So for them to do an action-based RPG with no turn-based, but just real-time combat with like a like an action bar, basically like a power bar for your attacks, was something a lot of people hadn't seen before. And I feel like this was probably a lot of people's first RPG for that reason, because it was more approachable. It was it was more, you know, Twitch gaming versus, you know, the sort of slower turn-based gameplay that a lot of Americans just weren't used to. But yeah, uh, it was directed by Koichi Ishii, and the art is largely done by Hiru Isono, who is somebody that I spoke at length about in a recent video about the top eight box art for Super Nintendo games from the 90s. Sorry, I'm very stuffed up. It's hard for me to get through this. Um, if you're just now joining this channel because you want to see some Secret of Mana action, uh, I do this every Saturday where I'm just playing the video game that I love from my, my childhood, a video game from my childhood that I never got a chance to play prior, or a brand new game that I'm excited to try for the first time. Um, if you're new here, Otherwise, when I'm not doing this, I am doing sort of uh, nerdy essays with zany backstories and, and side stories and whatnot. Uh, stories about like Uva Boll, where we learn about his history as a film director, but we also have him attack the space castle and try and talk me into boxing with him. <laughs> Things like that. So if it's up your alley, please subscribe to the channel and check out everything else I've got going on here. And if you're a longtime viewer of the channel, welcome back. Grab a donut, grab some coffee, grab some cereal, whatever makes you happy. Um... I haven't even eaten yet, but I'm eating this throat lozenge because I love you guys so much and I want to get through this video. So, without further ado. All right, so, uh, in America, we never got names of the characters. So when I was a kid, I always named this dude Atreyu because I wanted something fantasy sounding and also because I loved the uh, never ending story. Um, I would always start the game and I was I would always like immediately regret it because I would have a character named Atreyu in a world populated with characters named Timothy. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna go with the actual Japanese name for the character, which is Randy with an I. Nope. How do I go back? Figured it out. R A. N 
I'm okay, by the way. I've had the COVID for a few days now. Um, I think I'm sort of hopefully on the tail end of it, which is nice. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have COVID or if you've had COVID it, and let me know how much you loved it. Uh, also, leave a comment down below and tell me what you used to name this character back before we knew what the character's name was in America. Here we go. Using the power of mana, civilization had grown strong. In time, mana was used to create the ultimate weapon, the Mana Fortress. This angered the gods. They sent their beasts to destroy the fortress. A violent war rocked the world and mana seemed to disappear. Before all was lost, a hero with the Mana Sword smashed the fortress. Squaresoft really loved their uh, dramatic openings with ominous music. Though the civilization had been destroyed, the world was peaceful again. Made it. But time flows like a river, and history repeats. And Mode 7 graphics took over the world in 1993 and made everything super cool and awesome. <laughs> I'm not going to do the character voices just because I can't really talk right now. I apologize. But yeah, we got dudes named Elliot and Timothy. And my dude was always named Atreyu. Game has a wonderful sense of humor and excellent comedic timing. The writer was just on point here. But yeah, you can see right away like the awesome big sprites and the detailed backgrounds. The pixel art is just wonderful. The music is lighthearted and fun. Like this is just it was a perfect game to play on a Saturday morning. Or like I said, like when you were home from school and you didn't feel well and you just wanted something comforting and entertaining and, you know, fun and cool and adventurous to play. So I'm going to play it for probably about an hour. That's typically how these videos go. We'll see how far we get. Um, as always, if you want me to do a part two, I'll do a part two. If not, I'll move on to something else next week. But for right now, I'm really going to enjoy this because it's already making me feel better. It's also been a long time since I've played it, so bear with me. <laughs> Randy, Randy. Question mark, question mark. Ominous. Because you can't just walk over grass in this fantasy world. Maybe that sword, strangely placed in that rock, could cut through this grass. Assuming it's not rusted and doesn't break in half as soon as I grab it. So, this was a source of controversy when the game first came out, and kind of still is today. Uh, it uses this wheel format for the menu system, which uh, 
It took me a long time to get used to as a kid, and you use the up and down buttons to scroll through the different menu portions. So here you would decide like who gets equipped with what weapon. Here is your like your equipment as far as like what you're wearing. Y button is back, B is activate, which is kind of weird. Um, but you can like edit how the windows look, which is kind of cool. Um, you can go through and edit the controls. Uh, your action grid, which is kind of interesting. You can change how the uh, your teammates that you eventually like end up teaming up with and join your party, how they act when you're not controlling them, which for 1993 is pretty crazy. You think in terms of games of like, you know, Knights of the Old Republic and games like that that came like a decade or more later that utilized a system like this, uh, Dragon Age and whatnot. And yeah, this was revolutionary for the time. Really cool shit. I need to stop cussing on this video. <laughs> so yeah, it, it's just a bit cumbersome to get used to. But once you do, it's pretty intuitive and it's pretty cool because it allows you to pause the action in battles and stuff and take care of business without danger of like getting injured and hurt or killed. So yeah. B buttons attack. Love the attack animations. You can see once again down below at the very bottom of the screen, you've got your sort of action bar. Yeah, we just established that, Randy. Thank you. Uh, you swing, and then it takes you a couple of seconds to get back to 100% strength. You can swing as much as you want, but until that, that hit bar, or that action bar, reaches 100 again, you're going to do minimal damage with the weapon you're attacking with. I'll show you once we get to some enemies. And here we've got an enemy. A rabbite. So I could just start swinging, and it went from like 18 down to 2 because I wasn't patient, didn't wait for the action bar to, to fill back up. It gives the combat a little bit more of a, a dynamic. So it's not like an active time battle system, but there is an element of patience to it and strategy. So I'll hit this guy. See, I didn't wait. But now I'll hit him full power. I'll wait. Two hits, he's dead. I think that's gonna be some candy. It's always candy. Some of the aspect of this game I really love is the fact that it's a coming of age story. Randy and his cohorts are, are basically kids. They're maybe like 12, 13. And they recover health by eating candy. <laughs> it's got that, that sort of storybook quality to it, which I've always like adored. check our stats and we might just go ahead and level up to like level three or so before we, we get to where we're going just to kind of set ourselves ourselves up because the first initial boss battle once you get to it comes pretty quick and it's actually kind of tough believe it or not um this game is not horribly difficult um it's still tons of fun to play but there is some encouragement to grind which is typical with squaresoft games and if you don't spend the time to level up the characters, it can actually be pretty punishing. So, and it'll, it'll, you'll hit a point real quick. I don't know if we'll get there today, but you'll hit a point real quick where you'll realize that you're going to have to go back and grind a lot because you're just not going to be able to stack up against certain enemies in a certain area. Whoop. But, like, again, like, the music by Hiroki uh, Kikuta is just so calm and chill and soothing, despite the fact that I'm killing small woodland creatures with a sword I found in the middle of a river. <laughs> there we go. Oh, it's weapon skill up. So I'll collect weapons, and you'll level up your character on top of also uh, leveling up their weapon skill with certain weapons, which is pretty neat.
But I would play this game on Saturday mornings and I would get all amped up. And then I'd watch some cartoons or Power Rangers or something. And I'd go outside and play with my friends. It's a good time, man. Boom! Critical hit. Here's level two. Not always the same attack animation twice, which I really appreciate. Just gives some depth, makes the, the game world feel a little bit more alive. And the game world is massive. Uh, one of the things that people noted about the game when it came out was the fact that the game world is gigantic. And it, it dwarfs the likes of, like, A Link to the Past, for example. And uh, you end up having to use the, the Mode 7 graphic style to uh, navigate the world quite a bit, too. We're gonna check out the village, but we're gonna run back out and kill some more rabbits so they can respawn. But, uh, yeah, the, the game world is massive. You end up having to travel I won't say how or why, if you, in case you haven't played this game, because it's pretty cool. But, uh, bam, check that out. But yeah, uh, the game utilizes Mode 7 as an overworld, so you can travel all around the world, which is, again, ahead of its time and really cool. Candy. Told you. I'll go a little bit quicker. I don't want to take up too much of your time before we get to the meat and potatoes of the intro, our first boss, and the impetus, the uh, inciting event, which sends Randy on his hero's journey. It's going to be candy. Leave a comment down below if you like candy. Happy Halloween. kill this guy quickly so we don't lose it. Yeah. That candy. That good, good candy. <laughs> oh my god, it's gold pieces. Ah, I didn't wait long enough. There we go. What candy? Candy for Randy. Oh, it's gold again. What is going on? It's mass hysteria. Cats and dogs living together. Oop, missed. Combat in this game just feels good. Uh, even when you've got multiple characters in your party that you're gonna have to try and juggle a little bit. Um, like I said before, the menu system with the battle grid helps a lot, but in certain situations you're gonna wanna take care of other characters who might have a ranged weapon, for example. Um, but yeah, the combat just feels really good. And it was multiplayer. You could have a buddy plug in a second controller and control one of the other two members, of, or one of the other members of your party, which is, Again, really cool. So, it's still largely a single player affair, but you could call in backup and like your sibling or your, your friend or whoever was like hanging out at your house could jump in and help you out. I think we'll hit level three by the time we get back to the village, so we'll move on.
whacked. I was hoping for a two further. Oh, almost got it. <laughs> There we go, level three. We'll move on. This is good enough for right now. Uh, if it was just me playing, and now that I'm playing, I, I may have caught the bug again. Uh, I would probably spend more time leveling up just because it'll set you up for an easier time later on in the game. But candy won't fit. <laughs> Where are you putting the candy, Randy? See, now we're killing rabbits with one hit at level three. I don't know how I got him with that angle, but I'll take it. That's awesome. Talk to a couple of villagers. Did you see that, Randy? A minute ago, something lit up the sky near the falls. I have a real bad feeling about this. I do what I want. The environments are detailed, like just fire in the fireplaces. You know, some of the plants move with the wind, like just it's just lovely. We could buy some more candy. We've already got all the gear we need right now, so he's got nothing that we, we don't need right now, so. Yeah, not the biggest village, but a surprisingly number of, surprisingly high number of villages. I don't know if they all just sleep at the inn. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if Potos Village, which is the name of the village, gets a whole lot of uh, tourism. So. There's a strange guy in here. Looks kind of scary. I don't know if he looks familiar to anybody else. Certainly didn't see someone who looks quite a bit like him earlier, somehow. He's got nothing to say. But, like, the candles are lit, and, like, there's fire in the fireplace, and it's just a warm, cozy game. I just love this game. Alright, let's go see what's going on with the Elder. Randy, you're not hurt! They just told me what happened. Thought you were a goner. I told you it was stupid to bring someone like him along. This is the kid with the dunce hat. You idiots. Weren't you told not to go there? Huh? Randy? What's that you have? Oh no, it couldn't be. <laughs> I found the treasure. What have you done? How could you have pulled out the mana so sword? I'm gonna edit those coughs out. And I'm gonna drink a lot of water. I apologize. Said that the Mana Sword has been protecting our village from disaster. And here we are, first boss fight. The pulling of the mana sword disrupted the flow of things 
It unleashed a monster that was living under their village the whole time. But as fate would have it, the sword had to be pulled in order to inevitably save the world. I've got a sword. I know how to use it. Watch how the monster moves before attacking. Uh, I don't think that, that attack hit me, but that's okay. Whatever. <laughs> that's not fair. Uh, we're gonna eat some candy. Right, like I said, this game does not mess around. Like, I'm taking damage. I've already had to heal one time. I'm not unconscious. I'm left prone for it to attack me again. using all kinds of attacks that, like... Oi! All kinds of attacks that, like, leave me prone. <laughs> Block that one. Ah, that was a good hit. Ah, that was too. That nah, was cheating. Oh, we got him. Elliot's still hanging out in the corner, ass in the air. Sword is losing its power and must be re energized. We can, uh, we can mill about, see what the villagers are talking about after... Actually, where are all the villagers? There's one lady. Stop playing with that sword. It appears that all the villagers are, are busy doing something. What are they doing? This is heartbreaking to me when I was 10 years old playing this game for the first time. And the music.
And this moment right here always got me too because it's such a subtle moment that you assume that this girl was being raised by the elder right alongside Randy and she's probably like a little sister to him and she's oblivious to what's going on and she's like, are you heading out? I'll see you later. And he's like, he's not going to say anything, but it's like, no, you won't. But it's just subtle storytelling with, all right, get out of the way. <laughs> it's subtle storytelling with, you know, the limitations of what they had to work with at the time. And it's just really clever. And then this, this freaking track. Your mother brought you to this village when you were just a baby. Soon afterwards, she disappeared. I took you and have done my best to raise you. But now we must part. I truly hope you can find your mother someday. Goodbye, Randy. And when I was a kid, I would always take one last wistful look and then run away. And we can go talk to the villagers, but they'll just tell me to get the fuck out and like, you know, the, I can go to the shop and they're like, we're only gonna like, sell you stuff because the elder told us to because you need it, but there's nothing for us to buy, so. Hereby banished from Poto's village. Now we have no choice but to go to the Water Palace and begin our journey. But if you ever want to purge some emotions <laughs> and get right in your feels, you can always go right back to Poto's Village. And hear that sad music again. <laughs> the score for this game is brilliant. Like, I was deeply affected by, by all of that what just transpired with the music when I was 10 years old back in 1993 playing this game. Hi, we the Cannon Travel Brothers are building a global network. Going to the Water Palace? Gemma's already left. He paid your way to hop in. So, you can jump into the cannon and you can travel straight to the water palace. It'll be treated to like a mode 7 sequence where Randy will just like tumble through the air and land where he needs to be. Uh, we're going to walk though because it's more interesting. It'll give us a chance to, you know, gain some more experience as well. And have a couple more key moments. Stuff that you might miss. So, I should wait. Never mind. <laughs> Again, I will edit those coughs out, probably. You guys don't need to listen to that. You're already listening to my stuffed up, nasally voice, so thank you for that. Kingdom of Pandora. Oh, I forgot about the... I think they're called Bud Buds or something. Rush boom. Ah, I forgot about that. Yeah, they hit you with the uh, sleeping dust. And I like vaguely remember some of the enemies' names, but it's like you said, it's been a long time. That's a new spawn. That time. Son of a bitch.
So yeah, this game just, it means a lot to me, like I said. It's a game that was always very comfortable and cozy, and was something of comfort to me when I was, like, homesick. But it was a game that I rented a bunch of times, too, before I, I finally got it. And um, it was just one of those games that I would just default to on, like, Friday trips to the, the video store after school. I would just, you know, I think I would look and I would check out all the games. I'd be like, Secret of Mana, let's just do that. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Knocked me unconscious. And killed itself in the process. And left me open to this mushroom guy. But, um... There we go. Damn, that guy was tough. Secret of Mana is just a quintessential 90s game for me. It just reminds me of when Pizza Hut was good. Uh, when TGIF was on ABC on Fridays. Where are we headed? Kingdom of Pandora, which we can't get in, but he's going to tell us that uh, because of the situation with monsters, can't allow insiders in, which is fair enough. Really good melancholy music here, too. But this also allows the enemies to respawn so we can get more experience. But as I was saying, for, to me, this is one of the quintessential games of the early 90s. It came out in 1993, and like I said, it's just something that's very tied into... Uh, good memories of being 10 years old, being in like 4th or 5th grade, um, and it's something I kind of, I'm not going to get too personal, I'm not trying to be like Chris from, from CGQ Plus up in here, giving my whole life story, but uh, right about this game's release, like 1993, I was 10 years old, and for me, it's it's that era of my childhood, right around there, is is... Honestly, like, the sort of last really good era of my childhood. Um, I went through some stuff from, like, junior high on to, you know, through high school. And um, a lot of stuff that we won't get into, but uh, I just associate this game with, like, really good memories and really being happy in my late childhood. And it would, it would honestly be kind of a while until, like, maybe my junior year in high school where uh, things would kind of start to be good again and I would figure out how to make them good again. So, just school stuff, family stuff, but this game came out and is very, very closely tied to my very happy memories before things kind of got bad for a while. So, I don't know. Like I said, it's just a very comforting, very cozy game that I also associate with a really happy time in my life. You know, before I just wasn't so happy for quite a long time. Oh! Although, with those two cheap shots, I'm starting to have some new terrible memories associated. I got poisoned. That's what that was. <laughs> we'll just deal with it. Uh, in the game, I didn't get poisoned in real life. That's not what I was alluding to. <laughs> That's why I turned blue there just now, is uh, Randy got poisoned. Like I said, this game doesn't mess around. Like, it doesn't hold your hand. It does not, uh, does not go easy on you. You really have to commit to it, but it's so rewarding. The characters, the story is wildly in depth for being a 1993 Super Nintendo RPG. Um, also, I mean, of course we had, you know, I need some candy because I'm about to die. We need to pay closer attention to uh, the, the mush booms, or whatever this guy is called. And less about my life story. <laughs> but, um... I forgot what I was saying, because that guy totally threw me off guard. That's fine. Goblins! Oh, come on. Give me that arc. Give me that swing with the arc. Come on! There we go. <laughs> Yeah, leave a comment down below if you have amazing, fond memories of the early to mid-90s, because, man, I sure do. Bigfoot pizzas from Pizza Hut. Blockbuster video. Hollywood video. Candy! Oh, medical herb. All right. <laughs> uh, what does this lead to? Is this a water palace? No, this is... okay. 
We need a wit to go through the shortcut to the castle of Eleni the Witch. That's major dialogue. This mission will be full of danger, but we'll do our best. Major Dialogue, all set. All right, let's go. Where do they go? The teleportation zone. That we can't go any further in at this point because we don't have that whip. But you can see the arrows coming at me already. This area is full of wolves and goblins, and this is the area I was talking about before, where if you're not prepared when you get here, you're gonna get messed up and you're gonna have a bad time. That's the water palace. We're gonna backtrack a little bit, see what else is open to us just yet. Dang it. Nekos, that's right. So Neko is like a, a big cat. We'll see. What you got? Oh, we can shop. We can use some candy at this point. Or some chocolate. Or some royal jam, which is really good to eat. Fairy walnut, if I remember correctly, makes you invincible for a minute? I don't remember. Medical herb that cures uh, poison. Cup of wishes, I want to say revives teammates if they get knocked out. No idea what the barrel was, don't remember that. Bandanas, headgear, hair ribbon, these are all just armors. Um, I don't think we have a wristband. Let's get a wristband. And we'll just grab a bunch of candy. Can't carry anymore. Perfect. Oh, I think we're good, Neko. Peace out, homie. I'm gonna equip this real quick. Hold up, where is our accessories? Do this. I thought he could equip accessories here. Control edit, action grid. I don't know, I'm probably missing something entirely. Oh well. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We'll figure it out. I should probably stay there and get my health back up. We're gonna go to the water palace now, so it's fine. So what's really cool is the fact that if you are interested in picking up a copy of this game, if you have a Super Nintendo still and you want to play it, uh, out-of-box copies are not super expensive. Uh, complete in box, like sealed copies, of course, are just because retro gaming has become super, super popular and everybody's cashing in. But I mean, I bought my copy a long time ago, years ago, for I think like 25, 30 bucks just as a, a loose copy without an instruction manual or a box. You don't really need either of those. They're nice to have, but yeah. But yeah, I mean. When I owned the game initially, I uh, had the instruction manual, obviously. I would just flip through it because it was beautiful. Um, I had a copy of Electronic Gaming Monthly before I actually like got the game and owned it, which had like maps and like character art, which were like almost like claymation figures of the, the three main characters in the game, which is really cool. I don't think I can go in there. Yeah, I can't go in there yet. And I would just flip through that copy of, I think, Electronic Gaming Monthly just over and over again, just looking at it. I would do that a lot, honestly. I did that uh, before uh, Final Fantasy VII came out. There was a copy of, I think, PlayStation Magazine or EGM or something in the school library that I would just go and flip through all the time at lunch and just look at it until the game came out. Squaresoft just kind of like dominated my, uh, my prepubescence and <laughs> my early adolescence too for a long time. 
Let's go, Randy. Just walk through that door without opening it. <laughs> Just gonna walk through this shoulder high water. <laughs> Hey you, where's Luca? Randy, if you haven't guessed, up to this point is a little bit Randy. He's uh, kind of capricious, kind of precocious, other such words. He's kind of a, you know, rough around the edges kid. He was an orphan, allegedly, doesn't know where his mom is. Uh, was raised by an elder who clearly had his hands full with him. And uh, Randy's just a, he's a fun, interesting character. He's sort of that lost boy, which is really cool, who becomes a hero. Ha ha ha, welcome. I think that's a woman. I don't know why I did that voice. You mean this girl is 200 years old? Power is kept in orbs. Looks like it regains some power from the mantis end. There must be more hidden orbs which hold mana power for the sword. And you must find someone who can forge the sword to release its stored power. Watch out for the Empire. Randy is so far removed from the world in Little Poto's village that he's not aware of an empire, which is, again, pretty cool. skill level increase, so too will your ability. Bye, dude. Love you. Randy, what are you scared of? The sword. That is the mana sword, but its power is gone. It used its last ounce of power to summon you. Why me? Why did it choose me? I don't know. But now you must re-energize it. No way! Eons ago, the ancients used the Mana Fortress in their final battle. But even they could not control mana. In the end, it was your sword that saved the world. Survivors rebuilt the world to honor mana. Randy, the Empire must not restore the fortress. Regain the sword's power first, or all is lost. Looking back, this text is actually kind of hard to read against the background of those text windows. Um, I kind of much prefer the, the solid blue of the Final Fantasy games, actually. <laughs> oh well. It's just, I'm squinting a little bit trying to read that. You must become a hero who is worthy of the sword. Who, me? That's impossible! Randy, the Empire must not restore the fortress. Regain the sword's power first, or all is lost. Alright, fine, what should I do? You must become a hero who is worthy of the sword. Okay. I said I want to go through that dialogue tree again. Enough. Hold the sword up to the seed. For a moment, the seed and the sword become one. You have sealed the mana seed with your mana sword. Now the mana power from the seed will be sent 
be sent only to you and your sword. You'll be able to gain power from the Mana Seed wherever you are. The world has eight palaces. Visit them all and receive the power from them all. Take this spear with you. You'll meet somebody very soon who can use it. <laughs> Restore you. Sure, we'll save the game. First, head for Gaia's navel, like Gemma said. Look for the underground palace. To reach Gaia's navel, head south of the realm of Pandora. I'm just gonna take this seed, though. Oh, I'm already, I'm already restored. Okay. We don't need to save again. I'm just gonna be polite and make sure she can never leave here. <laughs> Take that. See you never. Subtle whale effects throughout the uh, this game's score are cool. You hear them very prominently in the game's opening, which we kind of skipped, but yeah. We're going to go over an hour, because I'm having a blast with this. I love this game so much, and we haven't met our second party member yet. And we're going to kind of shortly. She's not going to join the party right away, but yeah, we'll have a fun interaction with her. I don't even remember what I named her when I played back in the day. And I don't have my original copy. I don't have my original copy that I was a kid. I rebought a copy years later in like my 20s. So, yeah, I couldn't tell. Ah! I always forget those. Lucky, you're going to be our main dish. Help! <laughs> There's our friend. Sorry, guys. Mm. Don't get COVID, kids. It's no fun. We'll spend the rest of this Saturday probably on the couch playing this some more. Drinking a bunch of Gatorade. Probably eating some soup. And really just taking it easy. I hope that everybody else has a great Saturday, though. Uh, I hope you'll have really good plans and you get a chance to recharge and rest up and have a good time and prepare, uh, prepare mentally for uh, for the next coming week. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, as of today, like, today is Saturday the 19th, getting close to Halloween, which is an awesome time of year. Uh, if you enjoy sports, hopefully your sports teams are doing well. Um, if you live in Denver, cry about the Broncos together. Although there's rumblings, there's rumors that Alvin Kamara wants out of New Orleans and wants to come play for uh, Sean Payton again. But that's neither here nor there. Let's continue on to Pandora. Before I open up a Pandora's box of emotions with that little tidbit of, of rumor. <laughs> Did his ass just open up? Was that like... I don't remember. <laughs> yeah, I think that was his ass. Yeah. He's like pooping... fairy dust to try and make me go unconscious. It's like a PDD party. Uh uh Ah, I always miss those guys. They never miss me. We're gonna cut through Pandora. Now we can actually come in. This is Pandora. I was told to let you pass through if you arrived. Thanks, Gemma. Gemma of Tasnica is in the castle with our king. And I wouldn't talk to people in the town. They don't take kindly to children? I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't talk to them anyway. Whoa, a customer. Nothing much here, though. Kung Fu suit. Eh, I think we're good. Let me check my status real quick. Let's go equip. Whoops. There we go. Now we figured it out. How are we doing on, uh, stats, anyway? Pretty close to level 5. We could go back out and fight some stuff, but we'll keep moving. I am gonna crash at the end, though, because health is a little low. <laughs> Adorable sleep animation. Really good sleep music, too. Uh, yeah, we'll save. Oh, I guess not. I hit the wrong button. <laughs> so, while we're just kind of cruising around the town, I'll give you the spiel again. Uh, this is Space Castle. Every Saturday morning, I get up and I play a video game that I either have always loved would like to love, or a brand new game that I'm curious about, and uh, I thank you for joining me. Uh, if this is your first time in general with Space Castle, when I'm not doing this, what I am doing is uh, nerd essays with storylines. So it's me floating out in space in this Space Castle with my AI lovingly referred to as Goldblum, who uh, doesn't sound like any particular famous actor with uh, an odd way of speaking at all. And uh, he and I go on adventures, which somehow magically coincide with whatever topic I might be talking about that week. Uh, those tend to come out every other week uh, because I've had COVID and because I was attending a festival prior to that. It's been a little while since I've had a mainstream video, but we're going to fix that in time for Halloween. But these videos come out every week without fail because if I don't put them out, Goldblum said he would throw me in the airlock because he's like that sometimes. Please like and subscribe. <laughs> And tell your friends about this, too, if you're having a good time. I'd really appreciate it. I don't know why I'm wandering in this guy's house. I should talk to him. Why are you talking to me? I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything. I don't know shit about nothing. <laughs> the master and his daughter are at the castle arranging her marriage. Who could that be? Surely nobody we've met. 
prior. Who probably doesn't want to marry that guy and is probably in love with somebody else that we may have also met. If I remember correctly. This is awful. It's as though they've lost their will to live. Nah, we don't need anything from this, this dude. Let's move on. Let's let's go to the castle. If I can remember how to get to the castle. Is the castle in here? Or is it like... I don't remember. This might just take us out in the world, too. Yeah, how do I get to the castle? And it's been a long time. I, like I said, I used to have maps of this game that I would just kind of sprawl out and look at. This is Pandora's castle. There we go, we did it. Don't you ever shut up? Man. This game fully encapsulates my dating life, too. <laughs> One thing I don't love about this game is the camera is kind of weird. Like, you have to move almost to the edge of the camera. So I keep getting hit by those flower things because I can't really see them in time. I wish the camera stayed centered with you. I don't know. It's a very, very minor nitpick for an otherwise amazing game. Turned into zombies. Yeah, we're just gonna head inside. I don't think there's a whole lot to like. Yeah, I don't think like there's anything up here to explore. No. We're gonna go find our homie Gemma again. The Empire attacked us once about 15 years ago. land has had it. It has been cursed by a witch. Probably the one that Dilak went off to fight. Because he's like that. There we go. <laughs> I helped you, didn't I? It's your turn. We're going to go teach that witch a lesson. We're going to save Dilak. But, but I, I've, I've got to go to the underground palace. Later, later. Right, let's go. Uh, I'm Randy. Oh, uh, call me. Please name this young lady. Uh, so in Japan, she is known as Purin. I think I'm spelling that right. It's been a while. It might be Purin with a U. Oh, well, too late. I think it's P-U-R-I-N. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> you can call me Pirin. Pirin joined. Let's go talk to Dad real quick. Pirin. I hate you, Dad. I am not returning to this place. Ever. All right. Hold on. Let's, uh... Let's equip. She's got a kung fu suit. Nice. Do we have 
have uh... equip armor, targeting, status. Oh, weapons. We need to get to weapons. Oh, she's got bar. She got spike knuckles, man. She's not messing around. I think we're gonna give her the spear, though. I think I just messed that up. Yup. <laughs> it's cool though. Okay, so knuckles. Maybe I can't do that yet. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. Or maybe we won't. We're past the hour mark. If you stuck around this long with me coughing and talking all nasally and waxing lazadaisically about my childhood and how much I love this game, thank you so much. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed enough that you'll come back next week or you'll take a look at previous videos where I play a bunch of uh, really fun games and really enjoyed those too. Or maybe you'll take a look at the more mainstream Space Castle episodes and like and subscribe and uh, check out patreon.com slash Space Castle show and think about becoming part of the crew. You get all kinds of perks and stuff. It's pretty cool, I think. Uh, the people who are there, there's quite a few of them now, which is really, really neat and weird. Uh, they all seem to think it's pretty cool too. So think about it. That's all I ask. In the meantime, like I said, subscribing costs nothing and it helps me out immensely. Me sitting here in my jammies on a Saturday morning with COVID playing a video game still to make content for for cool people like you. The witch is the witch Eleni <laughs> <coughs> The witch Eleni is draining people's energy. Most people are going to the ruins in the southern part of this town. I'll have a look around. Head for Gaius Naval. That's a belly button. That's the planet's belly button. That's the wrong button. Expelled from your village? Well, this round two is having problems. It would probably be best if you also left this country right away. Damn, this kid can't catch a break. He's getting kicked out of everywhere. What a nightmare. The people in my country are acting like zombies. The troops I sent to fight the witch were captured. What? You and Dad made Dilek go to the witch's castle? How dare you try to drive Dilek and me apart? How rude. Be that way. Let's go, Randy. I'm probably the night legend. Can I have some treasure? Probably not. I don't think we're going to get all the way to Gaia's Naval and meet our third party member who's very cool and very fun, but that's okay. Again, uh, leave a comment down below if you uh, want me to do a part two. I will set this game aside and I won't touch it until uh, it's time to make another video. But, uh, again, I've, I've caught the bug, so if nobody wants a, a, a part two of this, I'm probably just going to start playing this along with all the other games I've added to my backlog. <laughs> so, yeah. We'll go venture out so you can see how the uh, the multi-character sort of combat works. And uh, I think we'll probably call it from there. We'll go south. Very ominous and scary looking statue. These are all the weirdos they were talking about wearing the masks. Wandering or like, like zombies. They're not going to let us in. But, you know, there's always stuff going on in the world, which is fun and interesting. Yeah, that's the castle. I think we gotta go to the east. I don't think there's a way out from... Or we gotta go to the west. I don't think there's a way out from the, the east. I don't think we need any items. Probably good on candy. We got two people fighting now, so... Yeah. 
Select button lets you choose between characters. Ooh. You see, uh, Bruin is getting her butt whipped already. And there's multiple enemies that are tough, that take a lot of hits to kill. You, you gotta really spend the time and grind and level up in this game, because it, it will wreck you if you don't. If you maintain it and you stick with it, you'll be fine. But yeah, like I'm just getting destroyed. Come on. Randy sees the Reaper. <laughs> I don't think I have any couple wishes. So we're gonna give Burn some candy. I don't think we're gonna be able to kill these guys. Man, that's rough. Okay, we did kill them. Candy, that doesn't help us. Okay, so I don't remember if going to the inn is sleeping will will revive him. We're gonna try that out. If that doesn't work, we're gonna have to bite the bullet and buy a couple wishes. It's gonna be weird if he's a ghost and he's... Oh, he's not sleeping. I don't think we can revive him without a couple wishes. Man, that's brutal. No, wait. Uh, yes, he's back alive. That's cool. Oh, crap. Okay, dope. He's back alive. Uh, I don't... I mean... At this point, I can keep going back and getting my ass beat. But, I feel like we should go back north. What I would do, what I'm going to do, and where I think we'll probably wrap this up, is uh, we'll go back north, and I'll show you a little bit more of the, the combat with the two characters. And uh, a little bit of leveling, and then we'll call it, because... It's going to take me a while to level up to the point where I'll feel comfortable and not get just wiped out going uh, west of Pandora and onto Gaia's Naval, so. Photos Village, Kingdom of Pandora. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's do this real quick. We'll change the action grid. Um, shit. Let's switch to her real quick and see if we can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we're gonna make her a little bit more aggressive, just for the sake of doing this. So she's gonna move in, she's gonna get in little jabs. She's gonna keep her distance a little bit though. Or try and punch him through trees. <laughs> that works too. But she'll attack, she'll back off. Leaves me open to attack too. Automatic level two, because she's pretty low level, which is pretty cool. But yeah, you start uh, start tearing through enemies with uh two characters, and then you eventually get to three. And then you get special dynamics like, you know, ranged attacks and magic and whatnot, so you can kind of strategize how things are going to go, which is pretty awesome. And they largely take care of themselves, too, which is, which is pretty great. We'll just keep wandering a little bit, and I'm just going to keep on leveling. Oop. Miss me with that ass dust. But yeah, this is a game I just absolutely love. Uh, damn. It was a critical hit. And uh, it's something that just felt right to play this morning because, again, I'm not feeling well. It's a game that used to always make me feel better when I was a kid, and I'm feeling better. So, thanks for hanging out with me, putting up with my COVIDness. And uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying your coffee or donut or cereal or Danish or whatever gets you going on these fine Saturday mornings with that crisp, cool fall chill in the air. And I uh, hope whatever you get up to today and the rest of your weekend is awesome. 
I, uh, I hope this, this helped you start off your weekend with the right foot. Or uh, whatever you're watching this, you know? Sometimes I'll watch videos like these while I'm in bed, getting ready to chill and like unwind and fall asleep. So if this type of video or this video in particular is helping you do that as well, that's awesome too. So however you're enjoying Space Castle Saturdays, thank you for enjoying it with me. I'm going to keep grinding a little bit, listening to this amazing soundtrack, looking at these wonderful, bright, fantastic square soft sprite animations but uh yeah you all have a good one and i will catch you in the next video